People of Gotham, tis I, Mark, here to relieve you, the little people, of the burden of wondering, who is the best Batman? Before I continue, let's make sure that we're all on the same page. There ain't no bat. You are correct, local ruffian. There isn't one bat, there's been many bad people over the years. Bat man, bat girl, even bat boy. Stay cool, bad boy. But with the recent news that Robert Pattinson will be filling out the cape and cow, we decided it was high time to declare a greatest Batman of them all. Your contestants are Adam West, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, Kevin Conroy, Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, and Will Arnett. <laughs> Here's how we'll determine a winner. Round one, box office. Round two, tomato meter. Round three, most iconic. And then we'll do a wild card round. The crowd is at a fever pitch, the villains are watching from Arkham Asylum, and the Batman, they're at home, washing their tights. Let's get it on. To the bat balls. Who's your tailor? Does it come in black? Round one, box office. This is going to be an easy win for one of two possible contenders. So before we name those billionaire playboys, let's take a gander at some honorable mentions. Ben Affleck, step right up. You never got a chance to shine in your very own Batman flick, Apples, which I do not like. However, he got to play Bats in both Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and in Justice League. Both flicks combined to gross $593 million domestically and $1.6 billion worldwide. Not a bad effort at all, especially when you consider that Val Kilmer and George Clooney's combined outings grossed $615 million here in the States and $1.197 billion across the globe. Never leave the cave without him. Unfortunately, this is a biased category for TV-friendly Batman Adam West and Kevin Conroy. Their bread was mainly buttered, respectively, on Batman the TV series and Batman the Animated Series. Adam West did get a feature film, but it was just a different time, and I don't have the box office numbers for the 1966 flick. Was Lincoln on the penny back then? Holy sardine! And while Kevin Conroy's Batman has had two feature films, they still do the bulk of their damage on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, and streaming sales. In theaters, his Batman flicks have done a combined $16 million internationally. It's a lot of money to me, but not to Batman. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. In cheerier animated box office news, Will Arnett's Lego Batman did $179 million in the US of A and $312 million over all of Earth. If you add in his appearances from the two The Lego Movies, it brings his worldwide total haul to an even $1 billion. And then there were two. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. This is Keaton versus Bale all the way. Bale did a full trilogy, and Keaton, although he was reportedly offered a full dump truck of $100 bills to come back for a third time, only did Batman 1989 and its sequel, the accurately titled Batman Returns. Bale's The Dark Knight is the highest grossing flick in the Cape Crusader's history, getting $698 million domestically and $1.3 billion worldwide. In second place is Batman 1989 with $590 million here in the States and $966 million internationally. All told, Bale's three movies did $3.945 billion in total Earth bucks, while Keaton's two talkies add up to $1.56 billion. So, why does Keaton win this round? Well, quite simply, if it weren't for him and his Batman, we wouldn't have any of these other bat folk around. Seriously. Both his films were massive hits in way less theaters than the Dark Knight trilogy, and him saying no to a third Batman film opened the door for our modern world of quick superhero reinvention. Val got his chance, then George, and George's movie was so bad it was actually good. Why are all the gorgeous ones homicidal maniacs? Is it me? In that we got to do a total reboot with a guy named Christopher Nolan at the helm, which gave us Christian Bale. I'm so good at explaining stuff. I should have been a teacher. Keaton's competitive per movie average, combined with the fact that it was in less theaters with less showtimes, plus the fact that he got there first, it all adds up to give him the round one win. Well done, Mikey. Alfred, let's go shopping. Yes, sir. Round two, tomato meter. 
Unlike the criminals of Gotham City, moviegoers tend to get excited when Batman comes around. But what about the critics? If Christopher Nolan's trilogy is to be considered, the tomato meter seems to favor the bat. Christian Bale's three flicks have a super fresh average of 88%. That's got to be the top of the mountain, right? Actually, Will Arnett's one standalone bat flick, the Lego Batman movie, is sitting at 90%. Plus, the original Lego movie is at 96%. Relax, everybody, I'm here. But if we're going by single, bat-centric movie accomplishments, Christian Bale wins out again. His The Dark Knight is the king at 94%. Ben Affleck's a cool Batman for sure, but his veggies have turned as his two flicks average a rotten 34%. He's still in good company as Val Kilmer's Batman Forever is at 39%. And maybe we can just all agree to not even mention Batman and Robin during this segment. Michael Keaton's two flicks average 76%. And for funsies, guess which one is higher? It's Batman Returns! That's at 79%, while the 1989 reintroduction of Batman is at 74%. So Bale's only real competition here is with OG Adam West and Kevin Conroy. Adam West's one Batman film is at 78%, but if you factor in the TV series, he leaps all the way up to 85.5%. Holy be average, Batman! Holy hailstorm. Kevin Conroy's films have a fresh average of 62%, but when you include the animated shows he's in, he jumps up to 80%. Good efforts all around. And for my money, Justice League isn't as bad as everyone says. You know what? I'm not dying on this hill again. At some point, even you have to learn to move on. When your worst outing as Batman is at 84% fresh in the tomato meter, that means two things are true. Your name is Christian Bale, and you've just won round two. Well done. It's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. Bruce? Round three, most iconic. Folks, as an icon myself, I know being iconic is all about making memorable moments. Now, a memorable moment isn't always necessarily a good thing. Take Val Kilmer, solid Batman, good brooding Bruce Wayne, but his most memorable moment? Telling Alfred he'll get drive through I'll get drive through Come on, Bruce. We're already watching your movie. We're going to Mickey D's after. Don't hit us over the head with it. A man's got to go his own way. For Michael Keaton, his most iconic moment is a tie between a good one and a crazy one. In the line that definitively announced to the world that there's a new superhero movie in town, he grabs a Gotham Street tough and simply says, I'm Batman. That's how you scare a criminal. Also seen in Batman 1989 is Michael Keaton reverting to his Beetlejuice days when he says to the Joker, Now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. What a great moment for the whole family. Bring the kids. Hell, we got plenty of snakes and lizards for them to play with. What? Some Batman had their best and worst moment at the same time. I got two words for you. Shark spray. When a shark is gnawing on Batman's leg and he's struggling to get his handy shark repellent from his utility belt, it's not only the stupidest thing ever, it's also a perfect summation of the campiness that the original Batman series was going for. Christopher Nolan's trilogy was going for something darker, as evidenced by one of Bale's classic moments towards the end of The Dark Knight. Rachel! Where are we? Bale's at his most iconic when he's straining his voice so hard as the Cape Crusader that it borders on insanity. I'm not wearing hockey pads. Okay, the Joker interrogation scene and his escape from Ra's al Ghul's Home for Wayward Boys is pretty sweet, too. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Speaking of dark, how about Kevin Conroy's Batman? Broody to the max, and he's got some killer lines, like in The Mask of the Phantasm. I didn't count on being happy. Or my personal favorite from the animated series. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman! Woo! You open with that, it's an instant swipe right. Ladies, am I wrong here? Rounding out the bad folk, George Clooney really only has dull moments, Will Arnett has some genuinely funny stuff, and is a great study of the Batman pathos, but the only real contender here is Ben Affleck. Ben has a great moment early on in Batman v Superman, when he's running towards danger as everyone else is fleeing. Dude really fills out a men's warehouse vest nicely. However, by the end of that flick, we're all ready for the big climax, and then what happens? Martha! That's what stops you, dude. You're killing an alien. You got him on the ropes. Your mock could show up. Brucey, stop hurting the poor thing! And you'd still finish him off. 
Come on, man. Don't believe everything you hear, son. It's a brawl between Christian Bale and Michael Keaton for this round. And you know what? It's actually Kevin Conroy. That's your winner right here. Maybe he wasn't on as many magazine covers when his animated movies came out, but if we're talking about iconic moments, there's one in practically every episode of Batman the Animated Series, and every movie he's in is jam-packed with Bruce Bat's conflict. With his films and the show, he had the most opportunity, the most amount of canvas with which to paint, and he got to go against the best Joker ever, Mark Hamill. Conroy wins round three. Am I blue? And now it's time for the wild card round. The greatest social impact. Now, this one is going to be Michael Keaton versus Christian Bale. Kevin Conroy is great. Wes is a legend. The others had a nice time. Oh, shit. But if we're looking at who influenced the landscape with their greatest detective more, it comes down to these two hunks. Michael Keaton gets some points for what went down even before he started shooting. Once it was announced that Mr. Mom was going to be Batman, people lost their minds. It was the first time in the modern era that a true shit was flipped over a comic book movie casting. 50,000 fans sent in protest letters hoping to convince Tim Burton to fire Johnny dangerously. And this was before the internet. You actually had to like write a letter and put a stamp on it and send it somewhere. The fans really hated this idea initially, but then from opening night on, people saw what a brilliant actor can do with this role of duality, and Keaton cemented himself as a versatile A-list movie star. I want you to tell all your friends about me. Batman 1989 as a film was a cultural landmark. All summer long, it was Batmania. I know, because I lived it. Did you know there was a run on black cotton t-shirts? Because so many people were buying them up to make contraband Batman shirts. I probably owned one or nine. It ruled the entire year. And I also remember in the summer of 1992, a bunch of parents freaking out because the penguin bit a guy's nose and blood goes gushing everywhere. So apparently parents were cool with Batman murdering a gaggle of killer clowns 20 minutes ago, but a little plasma was over the line. Ah, parenting. Hope it never happens to me. Christian Bale stepped into a very different world than Michael Keaton. In 2005, audiences were primed and ready for a darker, grittier type of hero. And who better to give that to them than American Psycho? Patrick Bateman led a double life. So does Bruce Wayne. Batman Begins, aside from being my personal favorite comic book film ever, also helped usher in a new dawn for the superhero movie. It was part of a tidal wave that we're still surfing today. But it wasn't until The Dark Knight that the social impact was truly felt. Why so serious? The Dark Knight showed movie critics what fans had hoped for all along. These kind of movies could be taken just as seriously as cinema as any other flick. It taught us that the term superhero movie wasn't necessarily a hindrance to award chances. In fact, because the source material was so fantastical, these types of roles would allow serious actors to show off their chops in new inventive ways. So how does one choose between these two when both were part of nothing less than an entire paradigm shift? Well, because we're looking at Batman specifically. And while Christian Bale was a huge part of the Dark Knight trilogy's greatness, the lion's share of praise for these films standing head and shoulders above previous Batman efforts was thanks to Christopher Nolan. And it was Heath Ledger's Joker that led the way for films like this to be critically acclaimed. So while Michael Keaton certainly had help from the likes of Tim Burton, Jack Nicholson, and Michelle Pfeiffer, it was his genius portrayal of a tortured soul that redefined what an audience would expect from a superhero. Michael Keaton is a great Bruce Wayne, an awesome crime fighter, in short, the best Batman in history. He wins this round, and he wins the match. Yep, that Robert Pattinson has some big boots to fill, be it from any of the previous bat folk that had to figure out how to pee while wearing that cumbersome suit. Just for some fun, Mark Hoffmeyer, the Alfred to my Robin, compiled a bunch of lists ranking the best Batman from a slew of different polls. His results show that it's actually Christian Bale who takes the mantle as the bat goat and that Kevin Conroy is a silver medalist. Keaton was a close third, but it just proves what? Uh, no, it does not prove that I'm a moron. It proves that our own opinions matter the most. So now, it's your turn, dear viewer. Comment below with a person who you think is the best Batman of all time. Is it Michael Keaton? Is it Kevin Conroy? Nicolas Cage's Big Daddy? Who you got and defend your answer. And while you're at it, do you think Robert Pattinson has the chops to add another exciting chapter in the Batman legacy? Remember, Pattinson, 
you are my number one. The guy. All right, have a joy. That's all for me today. I'm taking off and I'm a little hungry, but it's okay. I'll get drive through.